What's going on, everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the EA Sports College Football 25 Akron Zips Dynasty. That is right. We are back. So continuing along with this terrible, terrible non-football school Akron Zips, we actually got our first win last week against FCS East, which is not even a real team in real life. So put a little asterisk next to that if you wish. But we are looking to get back to five or I should say get to 500 for the first time today. And we are taking on an SEC team, not one of the better ones, but still much better than we are, as most schools are. And that would be the South Carolina Gamecocks who come in at two and one. Also got to figure out this recruiting. We got some guys that are pretty close to committing and some guys that we're probably going to have to sell if we really want them, and maybe some guys that uh, we're just too far out of the race for that we may just have to drop out and kind of distribute those points somewhere else. I did upgrade Dudley Saxton's coach skills. We got a little bit better in the recruiting department, so we can now uh, t have D linemen, you know, defensive ends, defensive tackles, guys like that take a little bit less time to scout. And then this one here I am super excited about, we now have increased starting interest from wide receivers and tight ends. Wide receiver being a big, big position of need for us. So we got a lot to get into today, guys. Cue the intro, man. So getting a look at our current prospects here, this is one that is rather puzzling and I've read some conflicting things online. So if you guys know the answer to it, please feel free to tell me down in the comments. But Tyreek Benedict, a prospect that we've been really, really high on all season and really just severely far and like nobody oh, else has even offered him. I can't understand why he's a gem. He's a four star recruit. We are still well in the lead, but it now says deal breaker. And I don't know, it, we're not able to add any actions to his board, you know, like DMing him or contacting his friends and family or uh, scheduling a visit or anything like that. So I don't know if that means we can no longer get him because he's not locked out and it's a deal breaker because of playing style. So I also read that uh, that just means there's too many guys in that position on the depth chart. So I went in and redshirted a bunch of guys. So I don't know. I'm keeping Tyreek Benedict on the board because he just looks incredible. He's a really good tight end and we really want him really bad. But that deal breaker just kind of scares me. So again, if you guys know the answer to that, please let me know down there in the comments. Bobby Babineau, a pretty good right guard. Don't have to really worry about the other schools too much. We'll keep an eye on him. And Brian Redman here, we got uh, Northwest creeping up on us really, really quick. We got 130 hours still. And Redmond's not the best of the bunch, but we need wide receivers. He's agile. He shows speed. So right now, we're only uh, looking him up on social media. We have a visit scheduled in week six, but just having Northwest there kind of scares me. So I'm going to at least, I'm going to add DMing the player on there for Brian Redmond because I do want to get him. And Kevin Teague, though, is the main guy that I want to get. He is... He's an athlete, but I'm pretty sure he's a wide receiver. Uh, yeah, he's a wide receiver, but he looks phenomenal. I mean, pretty good catching, but 92 speed. And uh, we're in the race with, uh, with the University of Miami, but they still got it by a long haul. So I think this is the time where we're going to have to take off, sell the house here. And I think we actually just go in and try to sell him. Now we could do soft sell. We could do hard sell. I don't really know the difference in the two. We're going to hard sell because at this point, I mean, it's looking like Miami's closing in for the kill shot. And, but here's where, here's the, but the two things that he really likes playing style and proximity to home. We're not that good at, we don't know about brand exposure. We don't know about coach prestige. So maybe soft selling is the way to go with Kevin Teague. I'm thinking that Miami's probably going to get him. I wish we knew a little bit more about like playing time. Is there one that has playing style, proximity to home and playing time? I wish that would be a combination because playing time, it actually is. Okay, perfect. So we're going to do time to get the work here for Kevin Teague. We're going to try to soft sell him and hopefully we can creep up and surpass the U. Davida Skura is another one here. We're really far ahead of Western Kentucky. He looks good too. I don't think we have to do too much 
with him right now. Daniel Keenan, the center, should be our first recruit. I mean, nobody else has even offered him. Again, don't know why. He looks pretty decent. I mean, he's got 79 pass block finesse, 82 pass block power, 82 strength, 77 pass block. That's better than really anybody that we have. And this, this guy here, Vernon Rambo, really want to get him too because we need linebacker. He's only a two-star recruit. But man, we are very far behind Toledo there. We don't have anything too much. We don't have anything going on with him at all. I guess we could put some points in him, but I also think that maybe, maybe, uh, God, dude, a hard sell. I don't want to waste all of our points here, but we got to get better. And I mean, this actually fits pretty perfect proximity to home, coach stability, athletic facilities. We know he likes all that proximity to home is there. So I think if we put, try to hard sell him, right, as being a team player, and we also DM him. That will max out. Actually, we have 60 now, but I'm not going to go any further. But I really like Vernon Rambo, the linebacker, if nothing else, because our linebacking core is pretty much cheeks right now. This is one that I'm not feeling confident about. I'm going to leave him on the board just in case, but I think that UNC is probably going to get this guy. We can't soft or hard sell him yet because he hasn't narrowed down his top five. But, I mean, maybe we just go balls to the wall here and send the house i think that's actually what we're gonna do because i've been talking about old garba here for probably the whole entire series so far so we're gonna go ahead and send the house at malachi and hopefully you know i, I just think he's gonna commit to unc but we're gonna leave him on for there juco guy deontay isaac we're pretty pretty far ahead of ohio state and the boys there so not really too much to worry about um in that regards akeem bullock as much as I want this guy, man, he's the best quarterback that we're scouting. There's no way he doesn't go to Tennessee. Also, it says deal breaker for him, too. But, again, I'll leave him on the board just, you know, because you never know. But it's looking like we may have to go after Mr. Ron L. Cutler here. If we want a quarterback, we don't have to get one. We have been Finley for a couple more years. I would like to get another, you know, at least developmental quarterback. So I went ahead and added Ben Hakeem to our board here. I scouted him a little bit. He looks pretty good as well. We're uh, looking him up on social media. We're contacting his friends and family. And did we offer him a scholarship? Oh, well, obviously we did. But no other teams have. So maybe we could see some movement on uh, the quarterback athletic guy out of Little Rock, Arkansas. Just another one too, Trevor Matlock. I've been talking about him forever. He's so close to committing, but it says deal breaker. So I just really hope that that doesn't mean anything you know because matlock may be the guy that i want most out of anybody in this entire class we got chester dalton here we're fourth place on his board we got some points to work with you know i think that we will go ahead and use 40 of those not going to send the house at him but we can probably climb up the ranks on chester's board we got to get better in offensive linemen no doubt about that wayne bullet the middle linebacker we're first place on his board we talked about hakeem and then Rashard Walter, the defensive end. Not gonna really, I'm not gonna scout him at all. Um, but I guess we can go ahead and look him up on social media. We gotta get better in the defensive end spot as well. South Carolina Gamecocks, first SEC team we've played today. They're 85 overall, and they're led by Lenoris Sellers, the red shirt or freshman. He looks really good at an 80 overall. Look at all those physical abilities that he has. But their real star here is Raheem Sanders out of Rockledge, Florida, the power back, the senior. He's got tons of physical abilities. He's got tons of mental abilities. He's a superstar for him. So he is probably going to have to be our prime focus number one today. Their receivers look pretty good too. They got Jared Brown. He's 83 overall, the junior. They got Nick Harbour. They got DeLevion Campbell, Amari Huggins, Bruce. Everybody better than our receivers minus Alex Adams, I would say. Tight ends, I got Joshua Simmons. He's pretty good too. Senior redshirted guy, 83 overall. Brady Hunt, he's got the sure hands ability. Nick Elkness, Elksness, I guess. So uh, nothing to scoff at here with the Gamecocks. I don't think this is going to be as easy as the FCS East team that we just played. Doubt it. And their offensive line looks pretty good too. So we've already had some trouble getting to the quarterback, and that may continue today as well. Defensive line, they got Elijah Davis, 78 overall senior at the left end. Tonka Hemingway, what a name. That's a ape. That's a superstar X-Factor name right there. A senior 86 rated overall player. And they got Alex Huntley and TJ Sanders as the D-tackles. Both really good options. 
this is not a pushover team. I mean, any SEC team, you know, playing a MAC team, not going to be an easy task for us. But the Gamecocks actually look pretty good. And this one may be a bit of a challenge for us today. And real quick, want to show you guys, I've set up some channel memberships. If anybody is interested, pretty good, fun perks, I think, and not expensive at all. If you're interested in becoming a member of this channel, we got two levels, the coach role, which is only $1.99 per month, the GM role, which is only $2.99 per month. You get to use some pretty cool custom emojis. You get the me uh, salty face. You get the JJ Ford emoji, the SFL emoji, and of course, the St. Louis Sentinels emoji as well. You get early access to new videos. So whenever I uh, upload a video to YouTube, it usually goes public a day or two later. So if you don't want to wait that time, you can actually watch it a little bit earlier. On the coach side, you get to start. If you're a creative player in the SFL, and if you don't know what the SFL is, it's a crazy series I have going on. Go check it out. But if you're in the coach role, your creative player will start with superstar dev on the GM side, the GM role here, or tier I should say, your creative player will start with Superstar X Factor. As a matter of fact, you get the coach role in the SFL Discord, which if you're not joined, uh, not a part of the SFL Discord, link is in the description. And uh, you get coach role in that, which is limited moderator access, GM roles, full moderator access, and then also member shout outs. So if there's something that you guys have, like a YouTube channel, or really any service that you provide, a company that you're a part of, whatever the case may be, if you're a member, I will leave about uh, 10 to 15 seconds at the end of my video to shout out all my members and also promote your stuff too because at the end of the day we help each other out so if you're interested in the memberships click the join button on any of my videos or the channel homepage and become a member of the cj smalls channel today go ahead and rock one of our alternate unis here for today's game against the south carolina gamecocks need to spice things up a bit Again, I'm expecting this one to be a bit of a challenge because the Gamecocks are much, much better than we are, as are most teams. So if you guys are fired up for this series and you're ready for some more Akron Zips Dynasty content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Remember, at 1,000 subscribers, I'm doing an NFL jersey giveaway for you guys so close. Please help me get there. I would sure appreciate it. It's free. And without further ado, let's get on down to South Carolina. And get ready for the game. They hear Sandstorm and Sir Big Spur starts getting those balls sharpened. Williams Bryce Stadium comes alive in support of their South Carolina game talks. We've got a terrific matchup for you today. Rich in pageantry and tradition, and it ought to be a fantastic plan. As we'll see a squad from the back, the Akron Zips taking on a squad hoping to prevent another ever this week, the South Carolina Gamecocks. Glad to have you with us for EA Sports College Football. I'm Reese Davis, David Pollock, and Jesse Palmer with me in the booth. Guys, we are ready to tee it up. Zip's offense going to get the ball first, which is good. I would love to come out here and just get some points off the board, get that first score, and Bobby Golden Nelson trying to pick up some good yards as Dudley Saxon does look on. And here's Ben Finley, who played really good last week. Granted, that was against FCS East, I realize, but still, nonetheless, you got to give credit where credit's due, and Finley did have a good game. I think he slung, uh, what was it, four maybe touchdowns? I'm not sure, and I see Alex Adams on press, and that is going to be what? No, get out of there, man. I'm trying to put Faison Wilson on a drag. He can't hear me, so we're just banking on the Alex Adams press. We're only really looking that way, Alex. Okay, trying to be aggressive to come out and start this one out. Not the, you know, the desired result wasn't achieved there, but got to be aggressive, can't be complacent. We're playing pretty good South Carolina team. So maybe RPO, can I get a good block? I ran right into the defender. Eight of five, and that will make it third down. Got some drags working here. Defenders are coming in hot as well. Yeah. Yep, our offensive line isn't very good. I was talking about that during the uh, recruiting process. We got to get better in that area because, you know, playing FCS East, we had all the time in the world. But we're playing an SEC team right now, so they're not going to be messing around. And we're going to get a look at freshman Lenora Sellers here. There are the impact players Raheem Sanders and Debo Williams, the middle linebacker. This team is uh, on paper much, much better than us. So unless our defense really came to play today, got to 
Lock in, laser focus now, Antavius Fish. Can he get in the backfield? Near sack there. He was trying to target Joshua Simon, or Simon, I should say, the tight end, and probably have a, uh, I don't like that press on the outside, not with these players compared to ours. And there's Raheem Sanders, one of their best players. Actually third in inches. And they're gonna go hurry up, so we are going full on DB blitz here. You better believe your freaking britches, and it's not gonna matter because it's nearly six. We were uh, able to stop stop Sanders there, but yeah, Gamecocks is not this is not looking like the FCS East game last week whatsoever. I was I was larger than life in that game. I was loving life in that game. I was loving everything about it. We'll check down there, but. For about no gain and apparently south carolina i guess they're just going uh hurry up this entire game and it's a run of sanders we're there to meet him let's hold him to a field goal. we're sending heat we're pressing i don't even care that is what's happening right now and just gonna kind of drop somebody back in coverage it's a touchdown that is joshua simon the tight end that drive was way too easy for south carolina they were going hurry up they weren't messing around they're like look guys we got the akron zips we got the Akron Zips today. They're not about nothing. Let's pound it down their throats. We just ran into the kicker, which I am really sick. They, something's going on with that in college football 25. There's way too many running into the kicker penalties. Come out shotgun. They could be sending some pressure at me, so I'm probably got to be looking for Wisner here right away, I would imagine. Wisner is open. He's going to catch it. And Max Wisner, absolute weapon. You are Mac offensive player of the week last week picking right back up where he left off and he has just been uh so so good for us i would love to see let's uh can i put adams on a curl okay he actually uh actually heard me that time got this stadium crowd noise uh starting to dissipate here and there's Faison wilson nice catch picking up seven bring in keith the freshman here uh he played so great for us last week he was most definitely our MVP in that one, and the block was just said, shed so quick there by TJ Sanders, and I think I probably want to go screen in this situation, right? I mean, seems like the right call to me because third and four, I don't want to do anything crazy, and this actually, believe it or not, could be four down territory. Not saying that it is 100%, but it looks like it's not going to matter as there is Keese picking up a first down, boy, we really needed that. Alex Adams can't hear me either. My receivers can't hear me. Oh, my God, dude. I got to go Wisner's way now. It's the only way. And Wisner's there. Thank you. Oh, he's still going, too. Wow. Okay. Well, that actually ended up working out pretty well. I was trying to shriek Alex Adams because he had a linebacker on him. And I was thinking that could have been like a you know quick step drop and sling there. But the end result is actually maybe better than it would have been. So... Can't argue with that too much. And I think we uh, bring in Charles Kellum here. Double team up on this defensive tackle. That seemed to work well in the last week. And just give me some good blocks. Kellum has a little hole. Gain of six. I will certainly take it. Play action roll out here. And I am going to do a little half slide to the line. Might be able to hit Alex Adams in the corner if we have some protection, which we don't. So Ben Finley's going to take off and almost score. Okay, that's got us in great position here. I want something, I guess single back will do. I was looking for something maybe inside zone, but uh, single back, you know, not the worst thing in the world. Hopefully Charles Kellum can pick this up. Give me some good blocks. We're in. Great response by the Zips. Going to tie this thing up, hopefully. 7-7. Seven, seven. I've been playing a lot of Madden 24 SFL lately, so I got to make sure that I get reacclimated with the good old kicking meter here kicking system because obviously it is much different that one is through the uprights by perez we got a brand new ball game go pressure here we got fish and mccoy sending a little bit of heat in the backfield and oh man this this uh running back sanders i was saying he's one of their best players and raheem sanders now at four for 73 and i am not a fan of this hurry up offense i don't like it I never perform well in these situations. And South Carolina is just seemingly doing it on every single play. There's Sanders again, shrugging tacklers off of him. 
finally going down. We're going to keep sending pressure, though. I feel like until we get some better players on the squad, there we go. Gang tackle by the Zips there in the backfield. But until we get some better personnel, like pressure is probably our best friend in a lot of these situations to have McCoy spy the field and great defense there by Joey Hunter. And I'm not sure if South Carolina is in field goal range. It's the end of the first, 7-7. Seven, seven. I mean, regardless, it's a win for our defense. Passing yards, they only got four, but they got 80 rushing yards. Only two minutes time of possession in fairness because that first drive was just so easy for them. And they are, in fact, going to punt it to us. So that is great. Good answer by our defense. Good stop by our defense now. Offense needs to come out and uh, just duplicate what they did on that previous drive. That will be out at the 10, actually. And here we go for drive number three. I do like only three down linemen, so this is very conducive to the run. And there is Keys picking up a first down, and he's injured. No. Our MVP. Uh, actually, it wasn't even a first down. He was short by inches. But, yeah, that's not good. I guess, yeah, I mean, taking a look at his... Uh, his physicals up there. I gotta remember not to, not to uh, switch the screen so fast because it shows you stuff up there. And that's a good fight. Good. Uh, I'm not even sure who that was. Number 25. It was Hester. Four yards to go here. We got some drags on the field, and we're gonna go to Bobby Golden, who hangs on to it, but only for a gain of three. Maybe I should have let him get a little bit more open on that one. And I think screen pass is our best bet here on third and three. Got to be careful, though, because Kellum is coming all the way across to the other side of the field. So, ooh, based on Wilson, uh, maybe? No, we're just going to go. To, oh, got to get that ball off. Yeah. Wonderful. Not going to go for it here as much as I want to. That would be uh, absolutely disastrous. We are kicking into the wind as well. So this punt. God, dude, I suck at kicks. God, man, whether it's field goals, punts, it's not good at them. Good at them in Madden, but not here in college football. And that was extremely unfortunate because we do give the Gamecocks amazing starting field position. And our defense can only hang on for so long. They're not very good. May oh, my God, what a vicious spin. And this running back Sanders is now over 100 yards. Wonderful. And the Gamecocks are going hurt. Aren't you guys tired? Don't you guys need a, a Gatorade? Put Gatorade break? or something i mean gosh dang dude i don't like it i don't like it one bit and that's a read option but we're there to meet sellers in the backfield thank you that's brian mccoy we really needed that yeah i mean i'll take a little bend but don't break drive right i'm not not opposed to that at all and gotta start with this, this running back is gonna be the death of me man it's gonna be the death of me you see that star under his body so obviously yes he's a good player and we just don't have the personnel in the middle to really do anything to slow him down. It's a problem. Good defense there, though. Second and goal. It's caught by Amari Higgins-Bruce. Two yards to go. We're going to send Heat again, but have somebody else guard up on the running back, which doesn't matter because that's actually Oscar Attaway, not even uh, Raheem Sanders. But the Gamecocks do extend, uh, retake the lead, I should say. And our defense is just not really up for the task in this one. This team is good. They're quick. They're fast. I mean, you know, SEC team, if they're playing a team like Alabama or Georgia, they probably wouldn't look too good. They're playing the Akron Zips of the Mid-American Conference. So they probably, they're going to look like Alabama or Georgia in this one. And now we're going to go play action, but maybe I'm looking, uh, I was looking for phase on Wilson and I had R1, but I got sacked. And this is all starting to crumble right before my eyes, unfortunately. And I'm not really even sure, like, what we even possibly expect to happen here. I mean, maybe Wisner, it's a wounded duck. Should have bullet passed it, I guess. And now we got to punt it back to South Carolina. I need eyes on this running back. We're basically, oh, and of course, as I say that, come on, big hit, lay the wood. I'll take it. Only a gain of one. Of course, they're going to hurry up because why wouldn't they? They've been doing this uh, all freaking game here. And I pretty much just always got to have eyes on Sanders, which it's going to be Sanders. And there we go. We're there to meet him. I mean, do I trust man coverage? 
in this situation, or do I stick with zone? Well, I, I guess we're going, we're going man coverage, but that does kind of scare me a little bit. Not gonna lie to you. I need a uh, Cooper to come out here and play a little bit of help coverage. It's a screen, and we're there to meet him. Good, good open field tackle there by Brian McCoy. And another Gamecocks punt upcoming, so chance for the Zips to tie it up. And that's really what we need to do because South Carolina does get the ball back after halftime. All right, Ben Finley coming out empty here, so no help there on the outside. That's a pick. Ooh, should have been a pick. I was only really looking at Wisner on that one, so that one was 100% on me. Tell you what, though, we are going to streak Wisner, and we got Hester on the drag in case he... Ooh, yeah, it's there, baby. Come on, get it to him. Thank you. Oh, and he's still going. Look at Max Wisner, man, setting us up beautifully. We got all three timeouts, so the running, uh, you know, running game is still in our repertoire, although coach doesn't seem to think so. So, all right. Hey, Dudley, you know best. You know best, brother. You were a running back. So, if anybody knows, it is you. Let's have Alex Adams on the curl. And I'm honestly probably looking at Wisner on, yeah, Wisner on the drag. I was about to say, why not? Wisner may be uh, approaching 100 yards now. I'm going to have Max Wisner on an out route, probably looking for maybe Faison Wilson in the middle. That's a terrible pass, but somehow... Wilson actually caught that thing. You gotta be kidding me. I don't know why they're so opposed to me going to the ground here. Like we got all three timeouts. We only need one yard. And really like the clock is not tremendous, a tremendous factor. So the running game, I mean, we could still go to it. Although maybe Dudley Saxon knows what he's talking about, but was a first down gained. I think we're gonna go back to the ground here. Again, clock, not too much of a factor. However, I am most certainly going to audible this into an Alex Adams streak and just show me that safety come down. He really didn't. And wow, we almost got sacked on that one. Second and 10. We're going to screen pass here to Hester. I think if he knows the play, he does. And a good block. Hester get out of bounds. Very, very nice. So again, still got all three timeouts in our possession. Don't really have to worry about the clock too much. However, we most certainly have to score. That is a uh, prime focus number one. And I'm kind of looking at Golden there. I don't really like it, but oh, that linebacker baited me so hard. Thinking Wisner in the middle or possibly, I know what play this is. We got to send Charles Kellum, but maybe, oh God, I shouldn't have went to Wisner as a matter of fact. I actually meant to go to Kellum there and completely screwed that one up. I actually did have Kellum. Uh, getting fairly open there in the middle of the field. Did not mean to send it Wisner's way, but <laughs> that's where the ball went. So believe what you want to believe. Let's have Alex Adams kind of go over here. Get some of these guys out of the way and potential streak to uh, Campbell, but he can't hear me. Come on, Campbell. I need you to hear me, brother. He's not. We're running out of time. I mean, can we get a hand signal? Or something, we're not going to be able to do it. We just got to go ahead and snap this ball. Campbell is going to be the target. And I think that we'll just go ahead and take our three, man. It's really hard when you can't audible. Receivers can't hear you. I mean, can we put like a three up for a streak or, you know, a two up for a curl? Like there's got to be something that we can do. But now we just got to focus on making this kick. Got to lock in here. This is not a gimme by any means, but that one should be good. And if nothing else, we put points on the board. So 17-10. South Carolina is going to get the ball coming out of the lock, coming out of the halftime locker room. So our defense hasn't really showed me anything. Couple flashes, couple sacks, couple TFLs. But Raheem Sanders is running all over us. They only have nine passing yards. So they are very one dimensional and there has to, but I just know as soon as I, you know, guess, pa guess, uh, run up the middle or something like that, or, you know, you sir, a guy down to play the run, you know, what's going to happen. They're going to tear me up deep. So, you know, but at the end of the day, uh, a pick, a pick would be nice. We haven't gotten, have we gotten a pick since Ohio state? We might've had one against FCS East. I can't remember a pick would be absolutely huge. But if nothing else, we're in this game. It's 14 to 10. So at least we're not getting blown out and still got ourselves a fighting chance. All right, Zips, let me see some of that.
fight. I know you got it deep down within your loins somewhere, and that's a good start. Okay. Antavius Fish able to track down the running back there, and I just really wish they weren't uh, going in these hurry-up situations, man. I do not like it at all. I always get cooked in these. Can Ooh. we get some pressure? Nope. Wide open in the middle of the field is the receiver. Yeah, it's hard. We just, you know, don't have the personnel to match up with the SEC team like this. This is probably going to be a run. And like, I mean, come on. We had five guys back there at least. At least. And we, you're telling me we weren't able to even get a hand on Rahe uh, Raheem Sanders? There's no way. I'm not buying it. Not buying it at all. Let's see if Sellers goes back to him. He has not even really had to pass too much. But I guess the few passes that he has made have been uh, accurate and effective. That time, going to be for only a short gain of three. I like to have somebody here in the middle of the field just in case. I'm watching Sanders, though, with, with watchful eyes. He's looking like freaking Barry Sanders out here, and that's going to be a quick RPO to Joshua Simon, the tight end. Looking like the Gamecocks may score in this situation. I don't like that we have our 46 defense out here either. That's probably why they're going hurry up. But I'm not trying to burn a timeout. I mean, that's the last thing that I want to do. There's Harris and fighting forward, picking up nine, nearly getting the first down. I mean, pressure, I guess. But like, I might. Well, there's no point in burning a timeout now because they're already down this far into the field. There's a nice stop in the backfield. Looking like Sanders is getting a little bit gassed back there. And maybe a chance to hold him to a field goal. I mean, I'm not really liking our odds, but the odds are there. And of course, of all things, it's a read option to sellers. Good play. I mean, good play call. I was fully clued in on Raheem Sanders, the running back. Sellers is the one to do it to us. And uh, Gamecock's going to extend their lead to 11. I'm hoping for Bobby Golden on this RPO, but it's not there. So, yeah. Keith's going to get leveled in the backfield for a loss of two by TJ Sanders. And then now we're just, you know, forced to be one dimensional. I'm going to try slip screen, though, because uh don't need to get all this yardage back at once, but just need to get some of it back. And Keith is back in the game as well. So if we I mean, what is number 72 doing? What is literally what is number 72 doing? I mean, come on. It's a slip screen right the guard and the tackles job is to go out and find a blocker here's number 72 easy read the only guy the only guy that we need to block and where does uh number 72 colin lyons decide to go he decides to run into number 50 to number 54 there i mean all you got to do colin brother it's just go out here and set a block. It's a slip screen. The job of a slip screen is to set up blockers for your running back. And if that block is set, if this block is set correctly, there's open, there's green grass and blue skies. But the blocking logic is so poor in this game. I mean, there's no excuse for that. Even pre-play, number 72, why would you even think who's going to be here? Who is going to be here? In this part of the field, nobody, nobody. If you open your eyes and put your head up right here, it's the only guy that you have to block. Only guy. And what do you do? Oh, you know, maybe number 54 here. He he might need a little pat on the back. Yeah. Unreal. And I mean, plays like that, just absolute deflators. We're trying to get back in this game. We're trying to fight our way back into this game. And dumb stuff like that happens. Thank God Charles Kellum saves it. I mean, that's really got me a bit fired up here, guys, because there is no excuse for that. There's there's no excuse for that whatsoever. This man, Colin Lyons, was recruited from high school to come play football at the collegiate level. So he has to have some IQ, some semblance of what he's doing on a football field. But you wouldn't be able to tell by that. I mean, this is most definitely four down territory. And you know, I'm watching Alex Adams on the outside there. Safety did leave his position. Come on, Alex. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Through all the bullshit, pardon my French, through all the BS on that drive, all the dumb stuff that happened, 
we persevere. Alex Adams on press. He's our best receiver. And we actually got to go for two here. Make it a three-point game, right? So probably looking double slants on the outside with Campbell or Hester. Maybe the stick route, which I actually think it is. Bang. Right back in this game. 21-18. But unless our defense can figure things out and figure out how to play defense, which is their one job, we're never going to overtake the uh, South Carolina lead. But hopefully we got a pick, a sack, a forced fumble in our repertoire. Something to get the boys fired up. Still good down and distance. And even though McCoy's on a blitz, again, we're just more or less watching. Sanders, there's a pass there. It's caught by tight end Simon. Now it's third and two. And I mean, we like there's no chance that we're not sending heat. And uh, again, watching the running back all the way. What the fuck? But this could be a house call. Not a house call. But there's just uh, that's that's just lack of talent because I'm playing as the Akron Zips. But if we could somehow limit them to a field goal, I mean, this game is, you know, still ripe for the taking. Um, but our defense just hasn't done anything really to <laughs> make me feel confident that that's possible. And the onslaught continues by Raheem Sanders. He's definitely uh, I, I feel like a lot of uh, scouts are going to be out looking for looking at him. You know, he is a senior, so probably NFL bound. And playing a team like this is only helping his cause. But right there to meet him is Darian Lewis for no gain. Gamecocks continue this uh, hurry-up offense, which has really it's got me flustered, that's for sure. Shaman Cooper off the edge. I need you to get some pressure. I need you to get in the backfield, please. And they didn't get in the backfield, but this is our shot right here to hold them to a field goal. That's all I'm asking. Can we do it? Probably not. We haven't been able to do it too much yet we'll see if it's a handoff or a pass it is a pass if they ask you how you are you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine and a touchdown perfect ball placement by lenora sellers we were fighting we were clawing still got a chance to do it but uh gamecock's gonna extend their lead back to 10 and if we see dumb screen passes and dumb offensive lineman logic it's just going to be nearly impossible to get back in this one. But we fight and we persevere in this Akron Zips team. We'll see how much uh, how much fight they truly got in them. Ten point game. I'm surprised that we're even, you know. Oh, Ben Finley, a thousand passing yards this season. How about that? Give it up for my man. And, you know, we do got him for another year. So that's why I'm not too concerned about like the Akeem Bullocks. Uh, and who's the other guy? I forget the other guy that we're looking at. Keem Bullocks is the big one, but it's looking like Tennessee is going to get him. But that's why I'm not too worried about uh, the quarterback position because we got Ben Finley for another year. Ben Finley is a dude. Right now, I need Faison Wilson to be a dude because he is going to be pretty much I'm, I'm banking on him and Wilson going to catch it and he has room to run. Drive will continue for Akron University. Test the running attack with Kellum. And I mean, the blocks are just getting shed. TJ Sanders, I feel like we've called his name a lot in this one as well. So probably going to be looking at pass, you know, for the duration. Maybe Faison Wilson gets open on his route, although I'm not really holding my breath. So it's going to be Wisner again, but great closing speed there by number 24. We hit Kellum on this one earlier. I mean, Max, uh, Bobby Golden will probably be my first read. Nope, it's going to be Kellum again. And that's the second time that play has kept the drive alive for Akron. You, there's less than five minutes to go here. I got the accelerated clock on too, obviously. Um, so maybe Golden or maybe Campbell. Just depends. We're going to go. Oh, no, 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 no. Thank God that was only a pass breakup. Yes, I might need Max Wisner to do uh, <laughs> Max Wisner type of things on this drive. We're just going to go to Kell or uh, yeah, Kellum, who's really been doing his thing in the passing game. And again, he picks up uh, six. So if nothing else, that keeps us in it. But he, uh, even if we score, man, it's like, ooh, you know what? Uh, Max Wisner, of course he can't hear me. 
I really need him to go streaking, man. Please. We got like 20 seconds. We got 20 seconds for you to hear me. Okay. There it is. Wisner going to be the guy. Oh, why? Oh, my God, dude. I don't think a field goal can get it done. I mean, we're going to need one at some point anyways. But I just, yeah, I, I'm not confident in kicking a 50-something uh, yard field goal here. Definitely not. Not with the way that I'm kicking field goals. We may have to actually burn a timeout here because I don't know this playbook well enough yet to really to really know what it is that I'm uh, looking for. So we're going to call a timeout. It's more or less the ball game here. Uh, Alex Adams, I'm trying to put him on a curl. There we go. And uh, yeah, just hope that uh, it's either going to be right him or Wisner but no it's Bobby Golden clutch ice in the veins oh man we really needed that and this game is you know I gotta say it's ours for the taking because it's certainly not but if we score a touchdown here we give ourselves a chance and sometimes that's all you can ask for is a chance and Max Wisner gonna ensure that we keep that chance alive as we get this ball down to the one yard line and now, I just need uh, my man Hester here to pick up one yard. Can you get me one yard? That's all I'm asking for. He's fighting and he gets in somehow. Wow, may have had an extra push from the offensive line there. Because Hester was definitely met in the backfield. And it's hopefully going to be a three-point game if I can nail this. Which, that should be good. But are we going to be able to get this hurry-up offense of the South Carolina Gamecocks off of the field. Defense, just give me a chance. I'm like LeBron talking about the playoffs. Just get me in the playoffs. Get me in the playoffs. Get me on offense. Give me a chance. And we may be able to pull off the upset. We got to have eyes on the running back here. Got to have extra eyes on the running back. It's an RPO. We're there to get him. I'm mashing X with the crack fingers. And here comes that hurry up offense I was talking about. They really just, I think, got our defense worn out today. It's probably what it comes down to. Definitely watching Sanders. He'll probably be the guy, or at least you would think. They're going to let this clock tick down, looks like. I'm double teaming Sanders. Sellers has to snap this ball. It's probably going to be a run, which it is. And a first down. That is uh, inevitably going to take us to the two-minute warning. And could be the end of uh, this comeback attempt for the Zips. Full eyes are on Sanders. So I am going to use her up on David. And come on, there's so many people out there. Thank you. Going to call a timeout. So I'm sure the ground attack will be uh, still hot and heavy here for the Gamecocks. They're going to come out shotgun. But that, of course, means nothing in college football. Everybody comes out shotgun. Got to put extra bodies here on Sanders and probably even... Cancel blitz with uh, Damian Lewis. We actually do stop him. Going to call our final timeout. So I'm assuming it's probably going to be a pass. But I need extra coverage out here. Can't be fooling around with any of these any of these plays. And where... Uh, that's game. That's game. Great pass by Sellers. He finds Nick Harbour. Comeback attempt falls just short, it would appear. Yep, 28 to 25. I mean, give the Zips credit, though. You know, we're, we we see now, I said last week, did we play so well because it was an FCS East school? I think the answer is still yes, but we hang it, we hung in there with the SEC squad. Granted, not the best of them, but it's SEC. Like, any team in the SEC is better than probably any team in the MAC. So I think there was some good takeaways. Um... You know, didn't throw any picks, which is nice. There was a couple potential ones, but Ben Finley and Max Wisner and uh, Keese and Alex Adams and some of our guys, they continue to be weapons. Um, Sellers only threw 13 passes for 92. He didn't really have to do too much, though, because it was mainly their running game. Ben Finley over 300. I mean, not the best completion, although 69, that is pretty darn nice. One touchdown as well. And then the rushing attack, uh, yeah, I mean, Keese had to leave. He was more effective in the passing game, I think. He had to leave early. I may have to look at monitoring these players' reps, but this is, I mean, this is the game right here. Raheem Sanders, 22 
for 25, averaging 10.6 yards on the ground. Max Wisner, though, like I said, continues to be a weapon. Eight for 121, Faison Wilson, Charles Kellum, and of course, Alex Adams maybe need to look at targeting him more. He had that big touchdown grab for a touchdown, but maybe need to look at getting him involved more like in the drag game and stuff like that. We did not have any sacks. I thought we did. No, uh, maybe not. Two TFLs for Brian McCoy, though. Two for Darian Lewis and a bunch for some other guys. But no interceptions. We're going to have to start getting some of those on the board if we hope to get any more wins this season. Okay, so now that deal breaker is off. Of, was he? Was Kevin Teague the one that had the deal breaker? I thought he was. Yeah, because he's the guy that we're fighting with Miami for. He's reached his top three schools. Miami's still pretty far in the lead. So we're going to have to take a look at that. Uh, Keenan, the center. I thought we were, thought we had a lot more. Uh, I don't know. We're still the only squad that's offered him a scholarship. But weren't we? I thought we were like so high up there. Uh, Malachi Garbutt, though. Nat, we are now above UNC. So that's what happens. What do we do? Soft sell him, I think. Or no, we didn't soft. We couldn't soft sell him. I don't know. Go back and watch the beginning of the video. We're now ahead of UNC, though, is, is what I'm trying to say. Trevor Matlock, he was the deal breaker guy, I think. But we're still first on his board, though. So, you know, uh, we're getting close with some players. We play the Ohio Bobcats next week, who are 0-4. Surely that can be a victory. One would at least hope to Mac on Mac attack. And uh, we're getting close with some of these guys, man. Kevin Teague, we can, yeah, so we can, we might even hard sell him next week. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see. Um, who was the other guy, though? Was it, was it Teague? I thought he was a deal breaker. Maybe it was Matlock. Might be getting him confused. And uh, Matlock, I mean, we're still the top, top school on his board. Still the top school on Benedict's board, but he says deal breaker now. So, you know, what happened to that center, though? Uh, Keenan? He had a lot more, he was a lot closer to committing. Um, is he down to, yeah, we might just go ahead and sell, try to sell him too and just get him on board. I don't know. Lots to think about for next episode, but we take the L guys. It was a fun game, I suppose at times, but that is going to do it for me tonight. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one until then. Peace.